the other snakes in this room are trash. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, man, welcome back to the Snake Trap Sessions. I am so excited to be back. What is good everybody? It's your boy MJ up in the building. We're not at the trap, we're here in Texas. Hey, welcome to Texas. I am back home, man. Guys, if this is your first time tapping in, what is good? I'm your boy MJ, this is my boy Mark Hager of Texas Condros. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell, select all. You'll be on top of every single vlog. It is that pre-party for Arlington at the mayor's house, man. Are you ready or what? Dude, it doesn't get any better than this. This is what it's all about. Like, yeah, there's a snake show this weekend, you know, all the, all the fun stuff at the show, but really like, this is it. Oh my God, this, this is, is it. it. Yeah, so what I thought we'll do tonight, man, I'll show you some of uh, Bill's updated neonates and what's happening. You, yourself, have availability going on with some of your productions. I mean, can you let the people know where they can see what you have available? Dude, right now, Texas is on fire. I've got stuff for sale, Bill's got stuff for sale, Pat's got stuff for sale, like, everyone's popping off. I got, I got a Neo in Bill's snake room right now that we can check out. Okay, perfect. But, yeah, hit us all up, man. Yeah. We, Texas would love to get some of these green trees out to the people. Well, for all of you guys who are missing out, you guys are about to be here right now. Join us for this ride to be ready because it's going to go down. Let's go. Choo, choo. We already lost Mark. The party's in here. Let's check it out. snakes in this room are trash. <laughs> Just kidding. But you'll see that in this focus cube habitat, oh, uh -huh, uh -huh, Bill has a very special chondro. This is 2311. And, uh, and you can see it. It was one of the darkest ones of my second clutch this year. And uh, man, over here at Bill's house, it's just thriving. So, so uh, Bill owns this now. So you you produce this, and now Bill is yeah. now. Owning. Yeah, we we worked out a trade. So uh, you might think I'm crazy, but I I actually traded this one for uh, a yellow, a, cu a couple yellow neo. Wow, I yeah. knew it. Yeah. So uh, man, it's uh, it's something that I was happy to do. You know, the the Texas keepers, we watch out for each other, we care for each other. So this is a calico line baby that I was very happy to put in Bill's collection because I know he's gonna do incredible stuff with it. What's the mission behind you and these yellows, Mark? Like I heard you, you kind of want to be on the other end of how people look at yellows and red neos, which is primarily people favor the reds, but you, ha you have something yeah, like a belief so, in you about these yellows, and I'm just curious what that is. Yeah, so, you know, the red neos, like all, most of the designer lines that are out there are red neo focused. And that's because guys like Trooper Walsh, uh, they they wanted and, and like kept the red neos back because they liked the red neos. And so they bred in like more blue, they bred in more extreme looks to the red neos because that's what they were favoring. Mm. So, uh, you know, now, 30, 40 years later, the red neos are the ones that are gonna turn out the, the craziest looking, the bluest, the blackest, but it's just because so much work has gone into it. The so more advanced is what you're saying. So my thought is, man, what if someone did that same work, but with the yellow neos? Because, man, it's, it's all the same species. Right. The red neos have just been worked with a lot longer. So right. if you want a designer that's gonna be blue, be black, be crazy colored, and you want to do it right now, quickly, 
a Red Neo is a no-brainer. Right. And I, I love Red Neos. I, I make them. Right. But, man, I, I wholeheartedly believe that a yellow Neo can be as blue, as crazy looking, as designer as a Red Neo if you just give it a couple generations. So that's, that's, point. that's the plan. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I can't wait to see this thing grow and, and uh, transform. And I mean, I'm really curious to see what direction this thing's gonna be headed. But based off the markings and everything I'm seeing, I, it's, this is gonna be one crazy looking animal, man. Yeah, dude, the, I the you're stoked. dark on the back, it's, it's, I think this animal's gonna go black and blue when, and it's perfect for Bill's collection. All right, guys, we talked to Mark, and now we got my man A and W, Alex, born in the building. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? All right, man. So everyone knows you as the right hand man in this room. Um, how's everything been going? I mean, before we kind of look into the neonates, how's it been so far? Helping Bill with the establishing and just really doing record record breaking numbers this year. Uh, it's going great, man. It's it's been crazy uh, establishing all these babies, helping Bill establish them. You know, just. Just getting everything going is, is crazy. It, it's a lot. In this room that we're in now, I know he has babies in this room and in that room, but uh, just for anyone who hasn't seen any of the previous vlogs, and I don't even really know what's kept in this right now, but what's going on in here, and then we'll go from here to the, uh, the all the holdbacks. Right, so in here is basically just like, uh, I guess you could say like the older stuff, like this was stuff that was born, uh, born first, and then the younger stuff is moved out there. Um, in my opinion, I think the cooler stuff has moved out there. All right, let's see if I know any of these names. Glenn, is that Ryan Glenn? Okay, it's Ryan Glenn, so let's, see, let's see what's here. Oh, it's a yellow. Yeah, Whoa. it's already starting to change, yeah. Uh, Clover Jaeger. Yeah. Clover Jaeger. So, yeah. Jaeger throws yeah. red and yellow Neos. Well, and Clover was a yellow. Oh, got you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. But Jaeger could also throw mad curveballs, right? It's, like yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Lucas. I know Lucas. What does Lucas got? Now this right here was from the same clutch as well, right? Of, of mine that yeah. I just got. Okay. Uh -huh. Dang, Lucas. What would be your favorite out of all these? I mean, I we, that one's nuts. Yeah. We'll look at that yeah, one. But what would you say your favorite one is out of all, all these? The focus. Oh man. You know. Okay. I'm gonna say number fourteen for the reason that it is the most aggressive neonate that me and Bill have ever established. I mean, it looks aggressive. <laughs> it, was, it is always ready to bite you. This thing looks like it needs business, <laughs> it, it does. You look like psychotic. Yeah. But hey, that's, that means you're gonna have no issues when it comes to eating. Dude, it, it, uh, it, it eats like a beast too? Yeah, it, it eats really easily and it, uh, also bites you really easily too. So right. That's definitely my favorite one. Why don't we check out, why don't you whip out uh, Ashley and Stevens? Let's see on that. Yeah, you want to pull it up. So this thing right here, man. I'm a sucker for any kind of blackness on a red Neo. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Oh, look at that. that was a, uh, that. That's the sickness's grandchild. Look at this markings on the head, man. And this one right here, well, can you remind me of the pairing on this one? Um, yeah, this was... Um, Soul Train, you said? No, this was, uh, this was actually from Buddy. It was, oh, uh, Buddy it was, Bushimi. Yeah, yeah okay, it, was, right. it was a split pairing between uh, between a sickness offspring and one of Buddy's females. So, so this is Bill's three. holdback from that clutch. Yeah. And Steve and Ashley are taking it? Yeah. What? <laughs> this is Steven it. and Ashley. <laughs> yep. It's Texas takes care of Texas. Exactly, exactly. They, they were the only ones that'd be able to get something like that. All right, a little intermission before we check out these uh, holdback Neos, but check this out from Focus Cube Habitat, the new heretic enclosure. I mean, they're trying to make bioactive possible, not that it's impossible, but holy shit, this is gonna make things a lot easier if you wanna go bioactive. There's an exhaust fan system at the bottom, which circulates air, fresh air from there, coming into there. And if you guys are wondering why do you want airflow, it's because it's gonna spike up the humidity. So that's the way to keep the humidity on point. And you have a system here that automatically detects the humidity and kicks the fan in whenever you need it. But this is this is the future right here. I'm not surprised. Focus Cube Habitat's the number one enclosure company in the reptile industry for sure. I'm just a huge fan. A lot of thought has gone into this enclosure and you can see like these, these are, purposely placed 
where they need to be to kind of get all the elements of the heat and UVB, UVA, all the UVs stuff. And uh, that's the man right there. That's the man who just- I didn't do it. Yes, you did. I Googled it. Bro, this is amazing, man. Hey, thank you, thank you, man. I kind of broke down some specs, explained to people what the uh, mission is behind the airflow system. Like, why, why is it this crazy? Our first stab at like an automated enclosure. So everybody's used to having to either miss stuff or constantly keep up with what's going on in the enclosure. Also, too, bioactive setups are kind of a you know a no no because they're they don't work. They're too difficult. Right. And this is essentially a system that kind of automates everything for you. So you're not worrying about too much humidity, too little humidity. Uh, you're you know essentially offering you know UVA, UVB, UVC, which you know is neither here nor there. But you've got kind of a, a wide spectrum of lighting that's available. You've got a DP projector, so you can push heat lower in the enclosure because it's rather difficult with a tall unit to heat these lower perches. So this whole setup allows you to heat the entire area um, essentially relative ease. Now the humidity setup, right. so we've got a probe in the back. So this guy monitors humidity. So when so you, this right here is what monitors the humidity, that, that, that probe, probe right there? The back. Yeah, so it, if you look at this screen here, it monitors temp and humidity. So essentially you can set your max humidity to a certain level. Once it exceeds that amount, it kicks on this four inch fan in the bottom. So you pull air in through the charcoal filter, through the fan, through a hose in the back, you pressurize the enclosure, your excess humidity is pushed out through the exhaust in the top. So it monitors everything for you, you're not constantly in there checking your sensor push, making sure it's right. So it does pretty much everything for you. And that's gonna prevent like mold and stuff from happening well, because yeah, it's- a lot of folks with like bio setups, most enclosures never offer enough venting and right. it's trying to guess how much is just a crap shoot of cutting slots in the back right whereas this thing once it exceeds that level it pushes it out so you're not having to worry about you know too hot you know too much heat too much humidity and creating ri problems so this wow. thing sort of pushes all that stuff away so you just set it up and you don't have to worry about it anymore well steven i mean like i said earlier i'm not surprised that you <laughs> are you and there's ashley shout out to ashley <laughs> Man, we're just loving this uh, this new build of you guys. And, and over a year, this took planning, I, I heard, right? Yeah, so the first iteration was built a year ago. This is the fourth version of it. We've got one more to go, and the last one is gonna be the official you know, for sale unit that has every kind of kink worked out. We, you know, pretty much run into any issue we could. So if somebody has a question, we've been there, done that. So, so it's gonna be just point and shoot, turn it on, and you ain't gotta worry about it. A little bit of, for anyone out there curious, well, when, when could these be available? Is there any guests out there? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping early next year, if not earlier. So that's, I, I really wanna get the next one built ASAP, but you know, I'm gonna give myself a little time, do some testing on the both of them, but I'm thinking either later this year, or early next year, they gotta be ready to rip. Awesome, man, thank you guys. No, thank you. I'm going to hold backs first and then we'll go from there. That's Bob's favorite. That's the crowd favorite. Yeah, that's the crowd favorite. Best one in here. Is it a yellow one? Oh, where'd it go? I tricked them. You tricked them. That's why I put it on the bottom, very bottom. Yeah, because it actually looks like a man. What's that? So what are we calling these now? Like scientific? All these Polker, Uranus, Miranus. You got a label there? Yeah, yeah. You saw this one, right, Bob? Huh? You see this one right here? This is brilliant. I haven't decided what I want to do. Another hold back. Another hold back. So many old bags. Oh, really? But dude, I, I got I got big hands. Yeah, yeah. And that's sure. that's a big snake. So how, how old is the snake work? She's a, she's probably a, a fifteen or sixteen. <laughs> like Seven, eight years old. Yeah, so. yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I'm right here with the homie Chuck, who almost fell in a propane tank, but he's Let's good. Go. What's up, Chuck? What do we got right here, Travis? Can we check this out? Yeah, here. Let's... Wow, bro. This is leathers, man. Are you are you gonna use these for feeders for neos at some point or no? Scenting. Scenting. He was gonna try to go. This uh, tail is still alive and wiggling. So would you freeze them or you would just uh, I keep them alive for keep a while? Keep them alive. So the best thing that I found out to do with them is just uh, is is give a neo a stubborn neo one. And uh, once you give them one, you can actually like scent, 
Can you go ahead and just go it. with that? Yeah. All right, guys, not the way I wanted to end this vlog, but it is what it is. I had an amazing time. There's still people here all hanging out at Bill's. I just want to say thank you, Bill, for throwing such an awesome time for everyone to hang out with. And that room's popping. It's really hard to kind of get some uh, <laughs> some vlogging in when the room is just popping. So either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If this is your first time watching uh, the trap vlogs, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, select all. You'll be on top of everything. Drop a comment too. Let me know what you liked best. Let me know if you want to ever come hang out at Bill's. Because if you do, let me know. We can make that happen, man. Shout out to my Patreon members. Make sure you go down to the very first link below. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. I'll see you guys at the top, man. That's all we have this week for the Trap Vlogs. I'll catch you here next week. And I'm out. Cheers. Thank you for watching this week's trap vlogs. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you're on top of every single vlog I drop here on this YouTube channel. If you're looking for exclusive content, please click the very first link you see in the description below. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. As soon as you join the Patreon family, you get a link to the Discord, which will tap you in with over 165 trappers. I'll catch you guys here next week for another trap vlogs, and I'm out. Cheers!